he's throwing his uh, DH in the middle of the fight. Now you would think that those dryads, uh, having those dryads and archers in a position like that, wouldn't be such a good idea. But when your opponent does um, the mass sanctum, I mean the dual sanctum build, that means he won't have any mortars or rifles, mainly because um, he can't afford them. It's a great idea to go dryads because he'll have nothing that can really damage them, so you can focus down his classes one by one, and you can let your bears focus on his um, breakers. Now, uh, Nilknaf TP'd, and that was an excellent TP, because if you check his Naga's mana, you'll notice that he doesn't have enough for another chain uh, fork lightning. And that's basically what was keeping him in the game, I guess. Uh, that was basically what was keeping him um, fighting. Now, pay close attention to what Moon does here. Nilknaf creep goes to creep this camp out for a uh, good item drop or something, but he doesn't have a TP. This is what I was talking about, choke points. It is so vital um, to know your choke points on this map. Uh, there's a little bit of time before the game ends to talk about this. Look look where Moon's dryads are. If you had your bears in front of those dryads, or say um, the undead player had some A-bombs where those dryads are and some fiends behind it, um, you don't want to fight as an elf player in choke points like that. There are very many on this map. Between basically all the rivers between the bases, there are choke points. In the small green turtle camps, there are choke points. Uh, in the middle of the map near the tavern, there's a choke point. There are choke points everywhere on this map, which is why this map is so awesome for elf. Um, you can really, really improve your game by uh, just learning the positioning on maps. Just spend a bit of time... Uh, watching replays and thinking about where you can lure uh, your opponent and where you can fight with a huge advantage, where you can put your bears so that his front line or his um, rifles won't be able to focus down your dryad, stuff like that. So yeah, so let's get on to the second game. So, game two. So get this paused at the two minute mark. This should this should be Czech versus Cherry Rain. Now, I don't think many of you will replay. Personally, I love watching Cherry Rain play because this guy is an absolute genius. Um, he's not to be underestimated. This guy is like Lucifer's mentor or something. Uh, he's basically on par with Soju, I'd say, uh, for you elf players out there. You, you, we don't really see many uh, replays of him though. Anyway, so let's fast forward to the two minute mark. I might be ending this game a little prematurely. We'll see how it goes. Do, do, do fast forwarding. I have nothing to talk about. Alright, I'm at two minutes. So, yeah, while you guys sync up, if you're not synced up already, uh, let's just have a look while the game's paused. Basically, what Czech's doing is he's doing a tavern build. Now, Let's unpause the game in three, two, one, unpause. Yep, so Czech's doing a tavern build. Now I want to go over this map a bit. Alright, so on this map, uh, Echo Isle, basically there are a number of hero choices you can do. There's DH. DH, great map. I mean, great map. Pfft. Imagine that DH is a map. Uh, DH is a great hero on this map. Well, he's not as good as, say, the DR, which is what Czech picked, but yeah. Now, there are, say, three heroes that work on this map. The DH, the DR, and the BM. Now, the Demon Hunter, the Dark Ranger, and the Beastmaster. Now, basically, if you play DR, then you're playing um, the, the neutral ground. DH is hyper-aggressive, and DR is sort of neutral, and BM is defensive, I'd say. Uh, here comes the DK. Um, one thing you should... Uh, learn to do is if um, there's a DK harassing you what you want to do is stop whatever you're doing and focus on his DK so I just want to go over that um, in future fights so I can keep talking about what I was talking about now if you go say DH one of the problems you face is the ghoul rush most undead players will immediately put up a second crypt sell their TP and ghoul rush a DH user uh, that's not what I'll be talking about this audio, but 
that's one of the reasons why DH isn't such a great hero on this map. Now, BM. The BM is a hero that excels versus undead. The reasons are because elf players, moonwells, BM summons, quill beasts, quill beasts own undead units at tier 1 and 2, basically. So, if you scout uh, the undead player as you send your first archer to the tavern or you send your wisp to the tavern and you see he's doing a fiend build, feel f um, don't pick up a DR because DR sucks versus fiends. I hate to say, at level 1, because versus fiends you either need to out creep him, which is done by a DR, although DR's not, there's no point in creeping up a DR to fight versus fiends, or you can go BM. Now, if you go BM, you want to pick uh, bear, hawk, bear, hawk, bear, hawk, um, like that. Uh, at level 5, you have a toss-up. If he's going um, dual slaughterhouse, then you get level 3 hawk. If he's going single slaughterhouse, then you get level 3 bear. Dual slaughterhouse means he's going to get wagons, A-bombs, destros, stuff like that. Single slaughterhouse means he'll get 2 or 3 A-bombs, probably 2 stats, that's probably it. So yeah. Now, we see... Basically, check expanding here. Now, if you're expanding on this map, what you want to do is you want to pull the creeps out like this, and you want to because a lot of the creeps on this map, you want to pull them out because they ensnare. So if you get creep jacked, you're in a bit of trouble. So check's basically just putting an expansion up, and he's taking a little slowly. Now, if you look at his tree of life, and you look at Cherry Rain's tree of life, you'll see that Cherry Rain has almost finished his tech completely. Um. This is a really awesome strategy that most people don't know about. Well, not that they don't know about, that they don't know about how to execute. Um, it's really strong, and I'll talk about why a bit later. Now, if you pick DR, um, the great thing about DR is you can creep like exponentially fast. Uh, if you're not too afraid of getting creep jacked and you're a bit gutsy, you can go the green camp check creeped first, then you can go to the green camp up top closest to your base and by that time you'll have five archers and about four or five um, skellies and then you can creep out the middle of the map or you can creep out say the merc camp but you can creep out the merc camp if you creep um, the small knolls closest to the merc camp first anyway so it's really up to you uh, if you go DR then it's important to um, know which camps you want to creep out so if you'd notice that Cherry Rain's DK was lurking around. Now this guy is really, really smart. What he did was um he harassed uh, the archers and the creeping a bit, but then what he did was run his DK into the elf's base because his DK was about to hit level three, and a level three DK can one shot kill a wisp with his coil. Now he's gonna get a lot of wisp kills here um, because he played that re really smartly. Now, Czech also tried to put an expansion up, but what, why he, the reason he did this was because he didn't want Rain sending his ghouls to Czech's expansion. Now, it might sound a bit complicated, but whatever. Um, you'd pick up a panda if you saw Jewel Crypt normally, but Czech picks up the panda because he's seen Jewel Slaughterhouse. Uh, panda is very important in this strategy though, so normally you, you wouldn't pick a panda if you see Jewel Slaughter. Well, it depends, like it's preference.